So thank you all for joining us during this holiday season, Jules. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am so excited to be able to do that to you. <laughs> so, hello everybody, and thank you for joining us to be able to be here to honor Jeremy Travis and his legacy here at John Jay. So first, again, season's greeting to everybody. And I am really so ecstatic to welcome you all here and to see people that I haven't seen in a long time, all who are here because of Jeremy. So these people I haven't seen in forever, they only want to come, they're only here because of you, Jeremy, so I hope you know that. Um, so we are gathered here to officially name the conference room to my right under that blue banner, Bunting, and I don't know how, I don't know who's pulling the string or whatever's happening there, but somebody, somebody will tell us. Um, to be able to officially um, commemorate this is the Jeremy Travis conference room. So um, before going too far, I want to acknowledge, where'd Susan go? His I will say better half, Susan Herman. Um, and, uh, you know, like Jeremy, she's, she's a renowned in this field as well. Uh, scholar, practitioner, everything. Um, your poor children, what a legacy they have to live up to. Um, so is, Eliza is here somewhere, and I don't know what she looks like. There she goes. Oh, Eliza, you got, yeah. You're, I, I know that because they brag on you, so we know you're fine. So uh, Eliza and her husband, Brian Tanico, welcome. Please, thank you for joining us here. And your older daughter, your other daughter, I don't know who's older actually, Zoe and her wife, uh, Sarah Walk, were not able to join us tonight, but they are with us in spirit, I'm sure. And you're not recording? Oh, yeah, we're recording it. I forgot. <laughs> hey, Thomas, I forgot about the camera. Um, also in the audience are members of the leadership from CUNY and um, the chancellor would be here, but he is um, not able to come out right now. Uh, and, but we've got Dolly, who, uh, so uh, Jeremy, when Dolly heard about this party, she said, do you know, I was, I was in charge of the search that hired him. Yes. So thank you, Dolly. Uh, we, he would not be here without her, and she's, she claims you proudly. Um, and members of our former and uh, current members of the uh, foundation trustees led by Jules Kroll right now, but I, I see Ron Molas over there. I see Muhammad Faridi. Muhammad was the last group you brought in because I remember that. Um, but there, what, there's LaBrenda. Will the foundation trustees please wave your hands, former and current, so Jeremy can see you. Um, and there are many former faculty members and leadership folks. I mean, again, we, you know, these people came back to see you. Berenice came all the way from Queens to see you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she really did. Uh, and people who've retired, who've come back, people who are trying to retire. Where'd Blanche go? Uh, yeah, Blanche tried to retire, but she couldn't do that without coming to see you. She almost made it 60 years. Um, each person in this room, yeah, that's a, right, uh, but she's not gone. Each person in this room represents a story, a memory, and a reflection of Jeremy's impact on this institution and much wider than inst this institution. He's got a history, uh, and I know he's not done creating more history and more legacy. Uh, I made the mistake of using the R word twice in life, and I got my hand slapped down the first time. I should have known better than the second time, and I'm not even saying it out loud. That's how cowed I am about it. Uh, but we want to salute you for creating a pioneering path for our students here, the research you created here, the center directors who were here, that it wouldn't have, they wouldn't have existed but for your leadership and your vision. Um, so you dedicated your entire career to being a fierce advocate for justice. Um, and, and that, 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 um, statement and that recognition of what we do was again coined during your time here. Um, is Alan Siegel here? He was here a minute ago. Alan Siegel, somebody oh, I thought waved at him. But anyway, that's the brainchild of Alan Siegel who's a, a brand supreme um, came up with that and it's something that, that is really caps, captures who we are and what we do. Um, so it's hard to enumerate everything Jeremy has done in his short life because he's a young man who's got a whole another adventure and, and chapter in front of him, but he earned his JD and MPA from NYU. Um, he got his bachelor's at Yale. He couldn't get in John Jay, so he went to Yale. <laughs> um, and then he famously clerked for uh, who became Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, and and um, 
she received an honorary degree here because of Jeremy and her relationship with him. Um, prior to Jeremy's time uh, here at John Jay, he was a senior fellow with the Justice Policy Center at the Urban Institute, um, where he launched a national research program fo focused on prisoner reentry. Um, he served 13 years here as president. You know that he led the National Institute of Justice. He's done lots and lots of things. But under his leadership here at John Jay, <clears throat> we became a senior college because of Jeremy. Um, and he's laid the groundwork because now we're trying to become a research institution too. Um, but that's all because of Jeremy. And, and his vision in moving us to being a senior college was also about creating pathways for those students who used to come here for their associate's degrees to still make a pathway here to John Jay. And that's why our CUNY Justice Academy, which has the best transfer graduation success rate, is because of your vision about how to, how to allocate that work. And um, the dean of the Macaulay Honors College um, came from John Jay, was also one of the leaders that Jane Bowers and, and Jeremy trapped Jeremy tapped and saw her talent, but we have a Macaulay Honors College program here at John Jay because of Jeremy. Um, he was always digging in and saying, we're good, you know, John Jay deserves the best of everything that CUNY and everyone else has to offer. So thank you for those gifts to this institution. He uh, expanded the faculty, tripled outside funding for research, and launched research centers, which I mentioned. I see David, I see Jeff, and I saw Anne earlier. Um, here that focused on research such as uh, violence reduction, prisoner reentry, juvenile justice, policing, race, cybercrime, terrorism, role of prosecutors. Is there anything I missed that you could possibly think of in the criminal justice space that he didn't touch? And also, he's so committed to this institution even after he left, he created the Jeremy Travis Scholars Abroad Program to help our students here have an opportunity to study abroad and have a global experience. Because we all know that this is a global world and our students need that, that opportunity and he and Susan together are providing that, so thank you. He currently serves as the Executive Vice President for Criminal Justice at Arnold Ventures. And um, we are, again, the beneficiaries of Jeremy's large ass, literally, literally. Um, thank you for, um, uh, Raise your hand if you're getting some money from Arnold. <laughs> uh, just about every hand should go up because in some form or fashion, you're all getting money from Arnold. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, he, he joined there five years ago when he moved to a new chapter and, um, from John Jay. Notice I don't say leaving John Jay because he never left John Jay. Um, so his next chapter is going to be a senior fellow at Columbia Justice Lab where he will, where he will write, advise, research, and author a book um, in partnership with the Justice Lab Director. And he, I can't, know, I'm sure, you, can you tell us how many books you've already written? No, too many? Four, he says. That doesn't include all the articles, chapters, and other things. Uh, and um, we're grateful for that. And we're grateful for his leadership and continuing to support and bring ideas to us. The wonderful bail convening we had recently, Mike, that was Jeremy's idea. Um, he didn't take credit for the idea, but I'm going to make sure everybody here knows that that convening was Jeremy's vision, and we are grateful again for you sharing those ideas with us. So I want to give my sincere thanks to Jeremy for trusting me with the next chapter of John Jay. Um, it, 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 um, so when I was at the Aspen Ideas Festival a few years ago, I ran into, um, you know, uh, Arthur. Uh, and he were, they were talking about what happens when you leave an institution, and um, he didn't know that what my role, when you leave an institution and you worry about who's going to take it over after you. So Jeremy was very, very worried. Hopefully he's breathing now. <laughs> I, believe, I hope so. Um, but again, I want to give a deep round of applause and thanks to Jeremy for your leadership of this institution and for um, leaving us on such a secure foundation. So now, I'm going to introduce my boss. <laughs> we love doing this. Jules Kroll, who's chair of our foundation. Jules, come on up. Thank you. Jeremy never let me kiss him. <laughs> It always pissed me off. 
because he was so lovable. And I figured I should be able to share him with Susan. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, any event. Um, so here I was, a struggling private investigator, walking the streets of Manhattan, and a woman who had been a major fundraiser for UJA, who we knew for obvious reasons, because we tried to help out with some of the programs. She said, I want you to meet somebody. Little did I know, little did I know how that luncheon would, would change my life, because I met the Pied Piper of criminal justice. <laughs> and I said to myself, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, this is, I, we employed many people from John Jay. I'd never been here. And Jeremy had just come into the role and he, he cut right to the chase. Uh, this, is the, this is the straight part of what I'm about to say. He cut right to the chase and he said, here are my aspirations. Um, I hope you'll come on to this journey with me. Um, and he said, here's what I'm thinking. And we had uh, the existing board of the foundation, which is designed to try to um, introduce the school to more and broader parts of the community and, and raise some money as well. He said, this is a really important starting point uh, for us. Now, normally at this point, I'd spend quite a bit of time talking about myself, but my wife is, is late, and so uh, I've got to leave that part of my program out. <laughs> Jeremy was beguiling. His ideas, they were fresh. They were original. They were genuine because he had lived within the system and he knew the kind of changes that needed to be made. He understood the value of the David Kennedys of the world and understood why they needed bigger platforms and the Bob McCrees of the world. And I could name a bunch of other faculty members here, but I only name those people who put me in their literature. Uh, <laughs> any event, he's the Pied Piper, intellectually, from a personal point of view, and we went on this journey together. I want to mention uh, a few people who, um, and, and then I, I learned some of his moves, because when I went to recruit people to come on the board, um, I would listen to how he would approach things. So Ron Molis, who had been at NYU, at NYU Law School, I think, with, with Jeremy, Jeremy said, NYU didn't understand what a treasure they had in Ron Molas, who's a combination of a dreamer, an entrepreneur, and has had the success to make things happen in affordable housing. That story was told countless times. And he said, there's potential here all over the city and all over this country. So I don't want to go on uh, too long, but I want to say that Jeremy and Susan, in our lives, have played a unique role. They helped me to expand how I valued certain things. And I had served on a number of boards of trustees for schools of higher education. None of them, none of them have been as satisfying as, as, as this experience. So to stand on the shoulders of Gerald Lynch, and to take it in a whole new and improved direction, which Jeremy did. And then to hand it off, which is not easy, to Carol, who's done things in her own way, with her own set of relationships. It is just, it's the quality of a human being, the quality of a man who understands not only strategically, but the reason I think of him as the Pied Piper, because people like to follow him because of the quality of who he is as a human being. You too, you too, if you fall under his sway, will have your own atrium someday. <laughs> Jeremy, God bless you, come up, I wanna give you a hug.
My, my dear, we got it's a photo up. <laughs> my dear, my dear friend. I was going to say, our next speaker is First Deputy Commissioner Ben Tucker. You're still always current, present tense to me in that oh, well, role. you got to be careful because, you know, I might not make it home. So thanks, Carol, and thanks, Jules, and thank you, Jeremy. Uh, it's a real pleasure and an honor to be standing here uh, at this moment in time, listening to Carol and listening to Jules, and you are both on point. You couldn't be more on point when you're talking about a guy who I met 38 years ago. At 38 years ago, we were, I was in the, uh, in, in the uh, NYPD at the time, and, um, and I'll tell you the other part of this because it's related to Susan, uh, but, but I won't. I won't tell everything. <laughs> I won't tell everything. So, so I'm running the CCRB. It's underwater. It's got serious problems, uh, and I've been there about a, uh, almost a year. Um, congressional hearings on police brutality and all of that. And a new commissioner Ben Ward, Benjamin Ward, is appointed by Mary Koch, and uh, he was a mentor of mine. Uh, when he is appointed the 34th Police Commissioner of New York City, uh, Jeremy was his special counsel. And you already heard why Jeremy would be the perfect choice for special counsel. Uh, and so Jeremy and I met and had several conversations. And by the way, he was so young. I remember thinking, I thought I was young, right? But, but Jeremy was, I think you look younger than I do. He's actually a little older than I am. But, but, but you were young, and, and you were, uh, Jules got it right. I mean, there's something about Jeremy who, when you meet him and you have a conversation with him, we were talking about issues around CCRB and what the challenges were and police community uh, challenges, and, and Jeremy was always, uh, you know, sage advisor, good counsel, uh, and, and, and great guidance for me. Uh, in trying to manage uh, an agency that really was an anathema because it should never have been within the NYPD, CCRB that is. It's kind of crazy. So, so, so I couldn't be more proud, you know, to, to be an alum of John Jay, first of all, but also whenever I come back to the campus, it's great to see everyone that I haven't seen um, from the, uh, 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 since the previous occasions. So, so, so this ceremony, ceremony, however, though, is about Jeremy, right? and and it represents a moment in our shared, uh, our shared history to honor an individual who has been committing his life's work to, to justice. And I learned that, you know, I've always believed in justice uh, throughout my career. But when I, when Jeremy and I connected, uh, we met in '84, as I said, and. From that moment on, I couldn't, couldn't have predicted or even known what our relationship would be like over the next 38 years. And it's still not over yet. There's, there's a number of stories that I could tell, um, and I'll share some anecdotes with you. Uh, um, uh, and, um, but I'll wait on that. <laughs> so. Let me, I wrote, I wrote a lot of stuff here, but I'm, I'm gonna just skip, cut to the chase. One anecdote that I'll share with you all, uh, but I swear you all to secrecy because it's never been heard by anyone in the public yet. And so Susan is getting nervous, Jeremy's getting nervous, Eliza and Brian may be getting nervous. Eliza, you can't get nervous because you were a little person when, when this all took place. So. Jeremy and I, a number of, 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 we've had a number of, after CCRB, we, we were at the Mayor's Office of Operations together. Uh, we did work on the Human Rights Commission for New York City together. Uh, and every time it was a, an incredible opportunity for me. Uh, like Jeremy, in addition to all his other titles, is, is really instructive. Uh, and, um, 
and his heart is always in the right place. And so for me, it, 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 it's just been, been an amazing, an amazing ride, ride. So let me, let me share this particular and, antidote with you, with you all. So when we were at the Justice Department together, Jeremy was the head of NIJ, I was a deputy at, at the cops office in the Clinton administration. And I was commuting back and forth to New York regularly every week. Uh, and, but Susan and Jeremy extended an open invitation to me. They, they took care of me during the week. I had dinner anytime I wanted at their home. And when Eliza and Zoe were little tiny people, I used to read bedtime stories to Zoe. And we'd talk in, late into the evening. So one evening, we're, we're having a conversation. Jeremy asks a question of Susan and I. He says, you know, I've been thinking about this, something to that effect, I'm paraphrasing, but you said, what do you got, what's, what job, if you had your choice, what job would you want to have? What would you really like to do? And I don't remember what Susan said, and I don't remember what I said, but I absolutely remember what Jeremy said. And Jeremy said, well, I want to be president of John Jay College of Criminal Justice. He, absolute truth. And, 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 and I said something that was probably disingenuous. I said, well, I, I said, Jeremy, not for nothing, but, but you know, you're going to need an attorney for that homicide you commit when you take Jerry Lynch out. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, that's, it was pretty funny, but, but no question that John Jay College and the community here got the best of that deal. Uh, during your tenure over those 13 years. Uh, Jeremy and I said we had these, these intersections where we worked together on and off and complimented each other with respect to how we, we spent resources in the federal government and things like that. Uh, but it was, it, was, it was, on every occasion, absolutely amazing. And I think the last point that I'll make about Jeremy is, is uh, we came full circle when I came back to NYPD in 2014 and Jeremy at that point, I think, was in year 10 uh, uh, of, his, of his appointment and uh, at the, as the president. And so we connected again to do a little, we're like co-conspirators in, in sort of thinking about things that we could do together and then making them happen. And one of the things that I think we're both proud of is the master's program for criminal justice and the work, the research around uh, the marijuana enforcement misdemeanors and, and so forth. Uh, it, it was, it was, we, we like-minded in that regard, and, and Jeremy, I think, suggested that he wanted to do this program. We did it, um, and we're in, uh, Peter, what, uh, fifth cohort? Right, fifth cohort at this point. Amazing, amazing. Uh, and, and it's a result of, of the, you know, the team here, uh, you know, Peter and, and, and his team, and, and making this whole thing a reality. So. Jeremy's been called one of the nation's preeminent criminal justice or justice reformers. And, and none of us would argue with that. And, and you know, Jeremy, your, your track record is stunning. Your body of work is really prolific in every possible way, and, and, and Carol and Jules spoke to that. But the depth also, the depth and the breadth of, of, of your influence as a, as a champion of evidence-based uh, criminal justice policy and racial justice in those areas, um, and, and, and also as a fierce advocate uh, for justice, suggests that you are so much more than that. And the so much more, in my mind, is just who you are as a person uh, who is always available for consult, uh, and, um, and I always enjoyed our time together. So I'm at the end of my my remarks being the Toastmaster now, I'm going to ask everyone to raise their glass, but I need a glass <laughs> with some champagne in it. Thank you, Susan. Susan thank you. And uh, raise your glass, glasses, I should say, for a toast to Jeremy, if everyone's ready. Toast to Jeremy former president of John Jay College, criminal justice scholar, an advocate for justice, and my friend, my dear friend, 
we give you our heartfelt congratulations on this well-deserved honor in the naming of this conference room in your honor. And, and by the way, I hope that everyone who uses this conference room and will know that your legacy is ever present uh, and, 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 and they will you know, know who you are um, and ask questions about who you were uh, when you were here and, and what you're doing, whatever you're doing in 10 years from now, because you'll be doing something. Uh, so, cheers. So good afternoon, early evening. It's wonderful uh, to be with all of you today. There are so many memories in this room. And uh, I have to share one, which predates the uh, discussion in our home in Bethesda when Ben came for dinner. We, Susan and I had this idea, of a lot of New Yorkers in the Clinton administration who were commuting back and forth. And so it was an open house at our house for anybody who had no house, had no home. So Ben was one of those people who would come uh, fairly often. Uh, and yes, he did read uh, bedtime stories to the kids. Um, but the idea of me coming to John Jay was first planted by this guy right here, Jay Hershenson, former Vice Chancellor CUNY, who was my counterpart when I was in, jo in City Hall working on education policy. And for a time, I had the CUNY portfolio. And we had a, you may remember, it was a meal, a lunch or a dinner somewhere, uh, where you were talking about very long term the future of John Jay. And it was Jay who first said, this could be for you. So that I, you planted that seed and look what happened. So thank you for being here. So uh, Carol, where's Carol? Carol, I just want to thank you for being the steward of this remarkable institution uh, that you have been. Uh, and thank you for the, the uh, very generous remarks uh, tonight. Uh, and Jules, of course, a big thank you to you and the board for helping to elevate uh, this college to uh, what it is uh, today. Uh, and that that's, continues to be a dynamic duo between the board and the administration. So I just want to acknowledge that there are many folks here who are um, dignitaries, uh, I just want to call them out. I'm an old-fashioned person in terms of public service. Uh, you, you may not have counted, but I counted. How many former commissioners are in the audience here? Uh, there's a number of them. Uh, Tucker, uh, Richards, uh, Kohler, I don't think Rich made it, but he's on the guest list, uh, Herman, uh, Dykstra, uh, former Sheriff uh, Reynolds. So lots of people who have who have been at the top uh, levels of responsibility uh, in city government. If I missed anybody, I apologize. And we have, yes, another college president here. Where's Berenice? She's already disappeared. Berenice, you're on the phone. You're doing work. OK, that's OK. Uh, so who, who was uh, one of my colleagues and, and partners. Hi, uh, at John Jay. And, and I can't go any further without uh, paying special tribute to my real partner here, Jane Bowers, the Provost Bowers, who helped in that educational transformation that we've talked about uh, so much. Uh, and uh, it's just great to see you here, Jane. It brings back uh, great memories. And you have standing in front of you, protege legacy. Look at that, right. Um, and of course, uh, my dear family, uh, Susan, Eliza, you've met. Brian, you've met. Zoe and Sarah, who are in LA, you've met. Um, and uh, so many dear friends here. So uh, words are not adequate, really, to describe the feeling of being with you today to celebrate not me, but John Jay. Uh, and also, of course, I have to say that to acknowledge the, with humility the generous recognition of the role that I played in the history of this institution as your fourth president. So I'm deeply grateful to everybody who made this ceremony possible. Uh, including, uh, where's Dolly? Chancellor Matos Rodriguez, thank him for that. And uh, Dolly True was managing the search committee that searched far and wide and found me in Washington. Uh, and the donors whose generosity made the name 
naming possible, and the board of trustees, which literally technically had to approve this, and also to the institutional advancement team, uh, John Jay. But more importantly, I'm really grateful to the extended John Jay family that has built and sustained and elevated this unique institution over many decades into the modern day powerhouse that it is today of teaching, learning, and justice. So another memory lane moment, if you'll allow me. Six years ago, this past October, I announced that I would be stepping down as president of John Jay, not retiring. I don't do that. Uh, and, uh, but just let's reflect for a moment what a momentous six years uh, that has been. Little did we know then, October, that Donald Trump would be elected president of the next month, that the nation would witness a historic uprising in the name of racial justice, that the country would be battered by a once in a century pandemic, that a mob would be summoned by an American president to block the peaceful transfer of presidential power, that rates of violent crime would spike after decades of decline, that the guardrails of our democracy would be tested as never before. So it has been heartening to watch over those six years at a distance as John Jay, under the leadership of President Mason, has navigated these tricky waters to emerge stronger than ever. Measures of student success continue to climb. John Jay facilitated a national conversation, thank you, Carol, on the transforming of public safety. The faculty and administration answered the students' call for an anti-racism curriculum uh, with creativity and commitment. The college managed to provide high quality remote instruction during the COVID lockdown. And the research centers, which I was proud to be affiliated with, continued during this difficult time and to this day to inform national discussions on justice, reform, and public safety. So once again, over its history that Blanche Wiesen Cook knows better than anybody else and Jerry Markowitz wrote about, John Jay has lived up to his promise as a beacon in the storm, a constant voice for justice. And during these challenging years, my admiration for John Jay has only grown. So the room that will now bear my name has been the beating heart of this great college. So this is where we held our town hall meetings to grapple with difficult issues facing our community. This is where the faculty personnel committee of blessed memory <laughs> made important and sometimes contentious decisions on promotion and tenure, where we hosted countless meetings, productive meetings with external partners and supporters of the John Jay Enterprise, and where at the beginning of each academic year, we donned our academic regalia before convocation. So this room stands apart when you think about it from the hustle and bustle of the Kroll Atrium. It's a modest conference room, distinct from the grand majesty of the Gerald W. Lynch Theater. A simple room compared to the grandeur of the Lloyd Seeley Library and the solemnity of, modern, of Memorial Hall. It's a floor and a world apart from the cultural sizzle of the Anya and Andrew Shiva Gallery, not as clearly identified with a single purpose, such as the Bettine, uh, uh, sorry, the Bettina Murray or Richard Kohler Lecture Rooms, or the LaBrenda Garrett M Nelson Children's Center, or the Siegel Writing Center, or the Moranti Pavilion. This room, that room, with the prosaic name of L61. <laughs> Who gets excited about L61? Was simply the room where it happened. You can always find a Hamilton quote for any speech, right? So continuing there, it was, to borrow more from Hamilton, this is where the game was played, the art of the trade, and the sausage gets made. This is where the work of the college takes place. L61 is an all-purpose room for all seasons. So when it was first proposed that this room would bear my name, I thought, how perfect. So I am just lifted up by this tribute, but I want to quickly acknowledge the support of everyone who has been with me over that 13-year journey as president. The dedicated faculty and student leaders, brilliant administrators, trustees and donors, and the thousands of students, thousands of students and alumni who treasure John Jay and because of John Jay serve the cause of justice. But the most valuable support has come from my family, 
who have been my constant and indispensable guides and companions on my life journey. As fans, critics, nudges, shoulders to lean on, and an endless source of energy, fun, and inspiration. Sitting in Bethesda, Maryland, nearly a decade after leaving New York City, Susan and I often wondered whether we would ever live in New York City again. We hoped we would, because this is home. But the way home was not certain. And then in 2004, thank you, Dolly, thank you, Jay, the door to John Jay opened, and the road back home beckoned. But little did we know then, as happy as we were to come back home, that John Jay would become a second home to me and Susan, to our daughters, Eliza and Zoe, and now to their partners, Brian and Sarah, and hopefully in years to come, our grandchildren and Henry and Rosie, and who knows, maybe more, uh, will come here and also feel comfortable at John Jay. So the John Jay family welcomed us with open arms. We will always be grateful for the friendships represented in this room. Just as it was exhilarating to us to come home to New York in 2004, it is profoundly moving to come back home to John Jay today. So on behalf of my family and myself, I thank you for bringing such joy into our lives. And I thank the John Jay family for this moving tribute to our work together. Thank you. I cannot resist, I cannot resist a comment made to me on the sidelines as I was standing between Ron and Ben. That's what a President of the United States should be like. That's what the President of the United States should be like. And we're going to send you back to Washington. Jeremy, we love you. Thank you. <laughs>